In 2006, the government predicted the worst Japanese quake would be 8.6, which would occur once every 500 years. The current one was upgraded to 9.0 from 8.9. They said that a 72 foot, this is two times the, the current estimate of the last tsunami, would happen. But only 2,700 deaths were estimated. Most likely it will be tens of thousands of deaths at this point. Uh, even though the tsunami was just half as tall as they expected, it's caused a lot more damage. And nuclear disasters weren't even considered. And I think that's bizarre, given that there are over 100 nuclear plants in, the in, in Japan. And it's also bizarre that the ones in the worst zone for their worst scenario are in eastern and northern Japan, which is where they felt there would be the most damage. But they didn't think about the damage to the nuclear plants that were built against the ocean. Last time we talked about Laswell. If anything, looking at this nuclear accident, we think, what would be a better ideal? And that, from the start, for Laswell, one of the earliest futurist idealists, he felt clarification of our goals in the present comes from thinking about the future, not just analytic statistics about the future, but goals and our values. And last time, to encourage our discussion of that, I said I would discuss some of my two books. So I added some slides after this to give a short summary of my two books. Uh, last time we talked about Bell, to summarize, study possible futures, probable futures, images of the future, study of the knowledge foundations of future studies, different methodology, we'll talk about that not next week, but the week after, and study of ethical foundations. What is the good life that you're aiming for? Interpreting the past and orienting the present. That's why many historians uh, who have long-term views are interested not only in what happened in the past, but what will happen from these trends into the future. Warren Wagar, W-A-G-A-R. Warren Wagar is someone we'll look at after I give my short discussion of my own ideas. Integrating knowledge and values for designing social action. How do you synthesize knowledge? How do you create a systematic view of the world? And Bell argues that futurism, and I think in a very good section, so read that section uh, about this, that futurism cannot take place under a dictatorship. It's very unlikely that people will be given political and cultural space to discuss their differing views than a central state model. So the measurement of where futurism can take place is a measure of political freedom for making a more democratic and communicating and advocating a particular image. Last time, you know, well, I said, am I a futurist? As I was preparing the course, I said, I wasn't quite sure, but after publishing these two books, and after reading Bell's list of nine, I assumed that yes, I am studying possible futures. I am studying a probable future. I'm trying to avoid some dangerous problem that I see dealing with environmental problems. And I have ideas for improvement. Uh, I had these backcasting, which is long-term historical views. And I said, I do have an idea of the nature of a good society, which I share within my work. I do interpret the past and orient the present. And I try to integrate and synthesize a lot of knowledge from the biological sciences and social sciences TABS stands for Toward a Bioregional State. That's where I think it's in that book. That's my book about green constitutional engineering. Uh, the state not just manipulating human politics, but manipulating environments for good or for bad. And I would like to see an increasing democratic participation. And of course, I'm trying to communicate and even advocate a particular image of the future. So, 
I never thought about it, but I guess I am a futurist in some way. This is a small section from a presentation that I gave in Sweden this past summer. Um, the theme or the metaphor is you know, fresh shoots from a dead tree. If we have all these institutional problems, what would be new institutional ways to adapt toward sustainability? So that's a metaphor that we can take with us as we think about these ideas. And I presented this in Sweden during this time. So first, that was the cover of the book. A short abstract shows that I have a different attitude toward what causes environmental problems. I think from comparative <coughs> historical research, I've studied the politics of environmental degradation over 3,000 years of history in China, Japan, and Europe. And I see Europe as just another case. I don't think Europe is special in any way. And the book is a novel approach to development to make it more democratically sustainable, really. I propose that sustainability, instead of an issue of population scale, which you see a lot of people arguing is an environmental problem, or just an idea of new forms of management or planning, and we need an overhaul of formal representation. Why? Because I argue environmental degradation has a lot to do with bad politics, with informal institutions guided by formal or informal corruption. And I argue it's corruption leads to environmental degradation. And our current formal institutions of states get built around these gatekeeping structures and maintain our politics as out of sync. There's a huge amount of pressure for environmental improvement, but most states in the world ignore that kind of politics. And that's what I'm talking about. They're not designed to integrate regional concerns. And I argue we're unable to reach sustainability without formal institutional change, a host of additional ecological checks and balances. Within the book, I have over 60 additional formal and informal checks and balances discussed. And you may think, well, what about policy? One thing that we'll learn, one thing that, one thing that I'm prepared for, uh, there was a scenario that none of those would work, so I brought my own today. And that one doesn't work either. <laughs> All right. There is one that works, I swear. Right. Well, I don't believe it. There it is. Systems thinking. No, it barely works. Okay. Systems thinking. We will learn from the Anderson reading later. <laughs> Anderson. Anderson reading later that to use systems thinking is not to change an individual's type of attitude, but it's to think about a system of formal interaction. And for systems thinking, you're concerned about a feedback between formal systems. And your ideas for change tend to be on the formal problem. Say you run a company and the company constantly loses workers. Well, one view is, well, it's just an individual problem. But if you're concerned, you may ask, why organizationally is the business doing this? And what organizational improvements could stop that? That's one way of using a systems view and institutional change view for futures improvement. I say, unlike most people who look at this, I argue the politics for sustainability is here. If you look at global polls, I don't think we'll have time, but we can look at global polls today, which I put some slides for. And they argue that there is a global concern for this, which is even more dominant than economic development at this stage. And this has been the case for the past 20 years of any global polls on environmental concern. I also argue that all of the materials and the particular technologies that would build a sustainable society already exist as well. That we do not need a future invention. We need to capture
capture what we have now. 